Okay, now that we know a little bit about the interface, the next thing you're probably interested in is sculpting. So let's take a look at that, okay? We're going to hit the uh, comma key. We're going to do the light box again. Let's go to project, and let's just use this Dynamesh sphere. And you can see there's different versions of it. Uh, there's a 64, there's a 128, and a 32. So think of the uh, number as a resolution, and 32 is the lowest. If we go up a little bit more or a little bit more up and through here, let's go do Dynamesh uh, 64. And what this does, it puts the uh, project in this mode where it gives you this sphere. We already talked about the grid. If you turn on and off the floor, you can see the grid. And then we've got this uh, red marker and this blue marker. The red marker is the X axis and the blue is the Z. If we tap X, we can turn on and off symmetry. And like I was saying, I like to give myself a little mark. And if I go to brushes and do S and then find standard, um, let's see, B, S, and then find standard, it's always hidden for me right there. You see the hotkey for that was T. So we can uh, tap S and we can make our draw size a little bit smaller and we can give ourselves a little mark on the mesh here. So one thing about this uh, Dynamesh sphere that we started, if we tap S and drag our slider um, to the left or to the right, I think they actually made it to where you can hold S now and you can drag it left or right for the uh, size of that. That might come in handy for you. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and sculpt out a little bit for like these eyes here. Now if you see this little red cursor thing following your uh, stroke, I'll hit undo for that. You can tap L to turn on lazy mouse and turn it off. Uh, with the standard brush, I don't like that on there. Now if you hold down shift and you uh, just click and drag, that's going to smooth out the surface. Now this Dynamesh mode that we're in, it's like this virtual clay, and if we turn on the polyframe, you can see the uh, individual polygons. If we hold down control and drag in the open marquee uh, in the viewport, you can see it's going to remesh this. So if we hold down shift and smooth out and then hold down control and remesh, every time we do something uh, like sculptural wise, we can remesh this thing. So if we take the standard brush and then make something kind of like this, I'm just going to make a rough shape for a nose, just kind of lightly tapping using the Wacom uh, tablet. And I'll hold down shift and I'll kind of smooth this out just a little bit. And then now let's remesh. Take a look at these polygons, how big they are. If we hold down control and remesh, you can see what it's going to do here for us. So we're just using this kind of virtual clay. I'm holding down shift and just kind of smoothing that out a little bit, just like that. Now if we do something like uh, drag up like this and then drag down just a little and then do a little mark here. We can do something like lips, so let's remesh that, and you can see what we're going to kind of get in through here for this. Now, um, sculpting wise, you see we're on Z add, and if we do this, we tap S, make it a little bit smaller, and hold down Alt, we can dig into a surface. So now, if we remesh that, I'm going to turn off the polyframe and then take a look at this and see what it looks like. Now, you can see the size of these individual polygons that we've got going on here. Uh, really, Dynamesh is set up in a way that you're really not supposed to be thinking about topology, and that's the geometry of things. Um, if we want, though, uh, you can see we can sculpt at a certain level, and if we want to have more fidelity or, or like higher resolution meshes and things like that, we're going to have to go to geometry. We're going to go to uh, Dynamesh and open that up, and we can see that there's a resolution here for this. So we can make this maybe twice of what it was, and we'll do 120 and I'll hit tab for that. And if I hold down control and drag in the open viewport like this, and just maybe smooth a little part and then hold down control and drag again, you can see now, take a look at the resolution that it made for us. So it jumped up in resolution. Um, now we can hold down shift and kind of smooth out some of the nose area and some of the eyes. And this just gives us a lot more um, a lot more resolution to kind of work with. So the more resolution, the uh, higher fidelity of something you can build or, you know, the, the more detail that you've got on this thing. So um, one thing I probably should say also is about the navigation on here. So if we just click and drag in through here like this, um, we're going to rotate around. And if we hold down Alt, we can pan this. And if you do Control right click, you can zoom in and out. Now there is an Alt click, drag, and then release Alt, and that zooms in and out. That one's kind of difficult. Again, that's Alt and click, just like you're painting around, and then don't let go of your mouse cursor or your Wacom tablet and just let go of Alt, and it turns into a zoom if you kind of go up in a down motion. That's a little bit difficult for everybody, so if you control right click, you can kind of zoom in and out. Now, as you're rotating around, you can also hold down Shift, and you can constrain your uh, camera to be like a left view, front view, top. 
something like that, right? Um, the other thing is just making sure you can turn on P and turn it off. And if you do that, that's going to turn off perspective. So like you can see, I can rotate here, hold down Shift, and I can constrain my axis to be uh, a side view. So those controls, um, not too difficult, but you know they are at first for a lot of people. So you might want to practice those a little. So I'm going to tap S. And I'm going to do this uh, again with the chin, just kind of draw up and then smooth out. And again, I don't like the standard brush as far as a brush that I sculpt with very often, unless I'm just trying to blow something up or get a very specific, like, kind of balloonish kind of shape or something. Um, but that is the, stand the standard brush is the one that everybody kind of starts with and kind of gets the understanding of uh, how this sculptural stuff works. Um, so... It's really simple. It's really just, you know, you're building up a surface, you're holding down shift, you smooth that out, and you can hold down alt, and you can kind of uh, dig into a surface at that point, just like that. And I'll hold down control, remesh, just like that. I'll drag my cursor size smaller, and just kind of come along and through here like this, and hold down shift and just smooth that out, just like that. And we go here, and you can see you can start to make uh, just about any any shape you can think of, you know. Um, and it's again just a matter of um, digging into the surface, raising the surface, um, and kind of smoothing the surface out. And that's that's really the basics of uh, sculpture. I mean, that's it doesn't really matter what medium you're using. Let's say you're using wood, you could um, glue wood pieces together. Uh, you could take a chisel and take some away and then you could get like sandpaper and you can kind of smooth out the results that you got. So even with um, something like um, wood, you can see how that process is. Now for stone, a little bit different. Um, you can take away from stone and you can kind of sand it and everything else like that, but um, additive stonework, uh, unless you're doing masonry or something like that, or you're adding uh, bricks or things like that on top, you're not going to necessarily have that process, but it is uh, very similar. So um, if you are familiar with sculpting in the real world, you should be able to sculpt uh, digitally as well. Yeah. And so, um, Again, I know nothing nothing special is going on here. I'm just kind of having fun just using the standard brush, just this remeshing uh, technique that we uh, took a look at, and um, kind of smoothing things out, right? Um, and so maybe your first sculpture will be something uh, similar to this, right? Something very, very simple, uh, just like you're taking a kind of a tennis ball or something like that and you're decorating it and kind of having some fun with that, right? Um, also, I uh, should note that I am using a Wacom tablet. That's what I would highly suggest for you. The Z intensity, though, let's say I'm doing this jawline on this guy and I don't think it's strong enough. Um, one thing I could do is, or I'm sorry, it's too strong. One thing I could do is take the Z intensity and drag that down and you can see now I get a stroke that's kind of like that and it's a bit more manageable and I'm kind of controlling that a bit more and so maybe I just want to barely kind of raise this up in this area and hold down shift and kind of smooth that out. Now you could do the Z intensity up here or you can tap U and you can do it right under the brush. Again this is one of those things where they added the ability to hold down U and just drag the slider so you might find that um, easier to kind of do. Um, so now I'm going to do just some brows for this guy just kind of like this. Uh, Trying to see if he's angry. Then we do something like that, right? Maybe he's surprised. We do something like that. Let's just hold down shift. We'll smooth that out. I guess I kind of like little surprise guy. And um, so you can see very quickly uh, some of the power of why you want a digital sculpt is um, we didn't do a whole lot of work on this thing. Um, obviously, uh, the more you get into the program and the more tools that we start to use, uh, the more sophistication that your model is going to have and the quality of your sculpture and everything else like that, right? So um, the draw of this is that you can quickly make these shapes, especially organic. Now, um, Pixelogic has done a lot of work to make it easier to do hard surface kind of shapes and things like that. Um, and that's pretty fun to do as well. But I think, you know, uh, your technical know-how is probably going to have to be up there a bit. So 
the very first things to do um, is uh, some of these little heads. Um, I know I see a lot of people, they start off and they make skulls, and I love skulls. Making skulls are fun too. Um, yeah, so a lot of uh, a lot of funny funny shapes and a lot of skulls as well. Uh, one thing this program has that's pretty cool about this sculptural process as you're kind of doing this is they've got this undo history up here so you can just cycle back through your model and let's say you wanted to get back to a state where the model was like this. Now if I start sculpting on this it'll say the current undo blah blah blah. It's basically saying if you hit OK um, the changes that you made after here are going to be lost and you're going to be starting like from here. So it's like going back in history and erasing a, a big chunk of history and then kind of doing things over. Um, we're going to slide this thing forward like this and now I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to kind of dig in through here. And I was going to hold down Alt and kind of drag out and through here, and then remesh. Again, every time you kind of see the model jump just a little bit, um, that's what is really kind of going on there. There's this remeshing uh, process that's happening. And this is kind of fun. Uh, again, if you start to feel like you need more resolution in your model, you can go to the geometry area and open that up under the tool area. Um, take the Dynamesh resolution and uh, crank that up a bit more. So I kind of go in slower increments before you kind of know like how far up you're needing to jump. So now take a look at this. I'm holding down shift and I'm kind of smoothing all this out. It gave me a bunch more polys to kind of work with. Um, now as it jumps up it doesn't increase the resolution in a way that's like super smooth. I know there is a blur function on there, so you could kind of maybe play around with that and up that if you wanted to get some kind of blurring. I'd rather just kind of hold down shift and kind of smooth this stuff out myself. Uh, that way I can kind of keep things nice and crisp where I want them and then, you know, less detailed or whatever in, in other places. So now check this out, the kind of resolution that we got going on. Um, I would suggest for new beginners that you you work in this way where um, you work lower resolution and then you kind of build up in your detail as time goes on, right? If you get too many polys just all at the same time, it becomes a very difficult thing um, to sculpt. So you really want to kind of be aware of that. I'm just going to remesh that and then add, holding down Alt and then add these like bigger kind of divots into this kind of like nose structure that's in here and then maybe I'll just do a positive on here and then the negative just like that and you can see what we're getting for something like that okay do this holding down shift just kind of sculpting on that. Okay, I'm just going to hold down shift and just smooth a little bit of this out. Now, we could keep going with this process for a long time. So this is up to you how far out you want to kind of take this, but um, that should be enough to kind of get you going to where you're at least sculpting with the standard brush. Now, in the next videos, we're going to start taking a look at some different brushes that we can kind of use. Um, but this should be enough to kind of get you just having a little bit of fun and seeing what digital sculpting is all about.